in correlation with this one. We've given already lectures on that passage as well. They will fall down before idols just the same. Thou didst know. Notice we're back to epistemology and what, what Christ knew. Thou couldst not have known uh, this fundamental secret of human nature, but thou didst reject the one infallible banner which was offered thee to make all men bow down to thee alone, the banner of earthly bread. And thou hast rejected it for the sake of freedom and the bread of heaven. Behold what thou didst further, and all again in the name of freedom. Again, an exclamation point. I tell thee that man is tormented by no greater anxiety than to find someone quickly to whom he can hand over that gift of freedom with which the ill-fated creature is born. But only one who can appease their conscience can take over their freedom. In bread there was offered thee an invincible banner. Give bread and men will worship thee for nothing is more certain than bread. But if someone else gains possession of his conscience, oh, then he will cast away thy bread and follow after him who has ensnared his conscience. In that thou wast right. So he's ready to give Christ his due. In that thou wast right. For the secret of man's being is not only to live, but to have something to live for. Without a stable conception of the object of life, man would not consent to go on living and would rather destroy himself than remain on earth, though he had bread in abundance. And we think of Viktor Frankl's Man's Search of Meaning as we work through this kind of a passage that is uh, as well. That is true. But what happened? Instead of taking men's freedom from them, thou didst make it greater than ever. Didst thou forget that man prefers peace and even death to freedom of choice and the knowledge of good and evil? Nothing is more seductive for man than his freedom of conscience. But nothing is greater cause of suffering. And behold, instead of giving a, free, a firm foundation for setting the conscience of man at rest forever, thou didst choose all that is exceptional, vague, and enigmatic. Thou didst choose what was utterly beyond the strength of men, acting as though thou didst not love them at all. Thou who didst come to give thy life for them, instead of taking possession of men's freedom, thou didst increase it and burden the spiritual kingdom of mankind with its sufferings forever. Thou didst desire man's free love that he should follow thee freely enticed and taken captive by thee. In place of the rigid ancient law, man must hereafter with free heart decide for himself what is good and what is evil, having only thy image before him as thy guide. But didst thou not know that he would at last reject even thy image and thy truth if he is weighed down with the fearful burden of free choice. They will cry aloud at last that the truth is not in thee, for they could not have been left in greater confusion and suffering than thou hast caused, lying upon them so many cares and unanswerable problems. We'll pause. We'll come back after a brief break to continue the Grand Inquisitor. Thank you.